Hello and welcome to lesson 10 of JavaScript. In this lesson, we are going to look at how to sort arrays and then we are going to look at loops. My name is Mildred. In the last lesson, we learned how to create arrays in JavaScript and we also learned how to look at the indexing and manipulate arrays um, using different array methods. In this lesson now, we are going to look at the methods that we can use to sort arrays in ascending or descending order. Now, the sort of arrays string is different from the sort using numbers because the same method of sorting string will not be exactly accurate in sorting numbers. Before this lesson, I have created three variables on the page. We have an employees variable that takes values of names. We have the ages variable that takes an array of numbers. We have the person variable that is an object of a person with the properties and the value for that person. So let us print out the values of the employees variable for us to see what it looks like and then we'll try to sort it. So I want to print out employees to the page. Then I'll also print out ages. So let's print out the values of both arrays, employees and ages. So I'll save, I'll refresh and I have the ages here and I have the employees here so we can see what they look like. To sort an array, we use the sort method. So I'll say employees.sort and I'm sorting in ascending order. So this will sort this in ascending order. And so when I refresh my page, the list of employees now will be sorted in alphabetical order. So we have it sorted. If I want to sort in descending order, after sorting, I will reverse. So I'll say employees dot reverse like this. Save, refresh, and I have it, um, the sort reversed to descending order like that. If I attempt to use sort on a number, we're going to get um, an error because it, it can't sort numbers the way it sorts alphabets. It's going to look at number one has smaller than number two, and so 100 might, 100 might come um, earlier than even 25. And so let's try it to see. I want to sort ages, ages.sort. So I'm going to print out ages to the page. So let's look at ages and we have 100 coming first because it's looking at the first numbers and it's looking at one has smaller than two. So this does not work. How do we now sort numbers in JavaScript? There is a function that we can use to compare numbers before we sort. And we put the function in the parentheses or in the brackets of the sort method. We write the function like this function. And then what we want this function to return. This function is going to take two arguments. Let's say the arguments are A and B. We want it to return A minus B. What this does is it is going to take two numbers. It is going to compare them, return which is smaller. And it keeps doing that until the end. The return statement like this. I'll save this now and I'll refresh and I'll have it sorted properly. So take note of the errors so that when you have issues, you know exactly what it is that you have done wrong. Now, when you are programming or developing, the more errors you make, the better you become because you begin to see what works, what doesn't work, the kind of error messages you get and what the side effects of doing things differently means. So this is the best way of sorting numbers. And when you want to do um, reverse sorting in descending order, you do B minus A like this. Save, refresh is going to sort this in descending order. So we use this function to sort numbers. I will just use the sort method to sort alphabets. So remember that the sort method is not going to sort numbers correctly because of the way it views numbers in JavaScript. If we want to sort numbers randomly, let's say we want to randomly sort anything, not just numbers, we can use a function. Let's say we want a function. This function takes no argument and we want um, is to return. So this time I'm going to use return 0.5. I want it to be 0.5 minus math.random like this. So this way, every time I refresh, the sort is going to be random sorting. So when I save this and I refresh, it's going to sort randomly. I refresh to randomly sort. And I can use the same thing for the employees and we're going to sort it randomly. So I'll tell you where things like this are applicable. I was once building a, an examination portal where we want to randomly select questions for students. I mean, we have a pool of questions and you want every student to have different um, questions. And what we want it to do is to randomly sort the questions by random pick some number of questions from each topic or from each subgroup of topics of questions and then return this into an array. And then it's from that array of 50 questions that should be populated on the students page as the questions to be answered. So in a particular hall, students will have 
different questions or they, they sort order for the numbering of their questions will be different. So number one in student A is going to be number 10 in student B or it will be number three in student C. And so we use that to control examination malpractice. So things like this, these are the kind of applications that you can use when you want to do random sorting. So when I refresh this, we can randomly sort anything and anytime you refresh, it is randomly sorted. And so when you have those kind of examination portal where you have two attempts for students, when you randomly sort, the second time they are taking it, they're going to have a different set of questions or a different order of sorting of the questions. And so at this point, they, you still control my practice, even though you are giving them two or three attempts. You are grouping these questions from the same topics, but you are making sure that the system does the sorting so that every time they reattempt the quiz, they get a different group or a different numbering of questions. And so when you learn this, you have to bear in mind what or where do they apply? How can I use these functions? How can I apply this? And as we go into the last weeks of the course, we're going to apply all of these to our software development project. So we have seen how to sort an array of alphabets and an array of numbers, so how to sort in both ascending and descending order. But for us to go further in arrays and iterating through um, the elements or the items of an array, we need to understand the concept of loops. And so we're going to look at the different type of loops that we have in JavaScript. And loops apply to anything, to both arrays, to any variable, to objects. And so we're going to look at loops in general, and then we're going to come back to arrays in another lesson. So I'm going to delete all of this, and I'll take this out for now, and I'll take this out. In JavaScript, in JavaScript, we have different types of loops. We have the for loop, for instance. For the for loop, we're first going to declare a variable that is going to hold the returned values. The for loop is written like this. For, we are going to put the first expression, which is going to be a variable. So let i is equal to zero. Now, because the indexing starts at zero for the array, I am going to say for the first index, which is i is equal to zero, I want to put a condition. And the condition is if i, as long as i is less than the length of the array, which is employees.length, I want to do something. I want to loop through, or use i++, which keeps go go keep going through every index. And what you do when you go through every index is to print it into this, to the variable x. So I'll say x is equal to x. I want to add it to this, plus employees i. So i is now the index. So print out the value at each index. So I'm not printing out the index, but the value at each index. If I want to print out just the index, I'm just going to print out i, but not employees i. And I want to print each of them on a new line. So I'll just add plus and I'll put the break tag here like this. And here I'm going to put printing out x. Save this. When I refresh my page, I have each of the item printed out on a new line. So this is one way of looping through the items of an array. We use the for loop. Apart from an array, you can use the for loop to do several things. For instance, let's say I'm not talking about the employees. I just want to print out to the page number 1 to 10 or number 0 to 9, sorry. If I do 0 to 9, so I'm starting from 0, I'm saying I should make sure that i is less than 10. As long as it is less than 10, keep incrementing by 1. i++ plus plus is the same as i is equal to i plus 1. So which means increment by 1, go forward by 1. So it is going to start at 0, make sure it is less than 10. Once it hits 9 and it checks the next one is 10, it stops the loop. And so this time I'm going to be printing out x is equal to x plus i. And we know that x is equal to x plus i is the same as x plus equal i like this and then i want it to be on a new line each or if i don't want a new line i can say print them out as a comma separated list like this so i want to print zero to nine to the page and so when i print x i refresh it's going to print zero to nine if i want to print one to ten i'm going to put here one and i can use less than or equal to ten or we can use greater than eleven so anyone that prints it out will have that if you forget to increment, you begin to have problems like having an infinite loop that crashes your browser. So this is how we use the for loop at the simplest. We use it for arrays. We can use it for several things, not just arrays, but this is the for loop. So we also have the for off loop that we can use for arrays. And we can do it like this. We can say let x be equal to this. And I'll say for let i of employees like this. So I want to say for each index of employees, I want to do something. 
so let's say x plus equal i so what this is doing is saying let i of employees for each member or each item of the employees print i out to the page so let's print it and let's add maybe a pipe sign between them save refresh and we'll have them printed there so for each item in the employees array print out the item and put a pipe between them or want to put a break tag or print each of them on a new line like this so this is one application of the for off loop so we have for loop we have for off loop and let's look at the for in loop and which is most commonly used in objects so let's say we have let x is equal to this and i want to say for let so let's say for let i in person okay and what do we want to do with this we want to print out x plus equal person i so what this is doing is saying for each property or for each key these are key value pairs so i is like the key so if we want to make it easier for you to remember you can use the variable key say for key in person print out the person key so we're going to be printing out the value if we want to print out key we are only going to print out the properties so we're going to be printing out the values and then let's print out the values as a comma separated list like this when i save this and i refresh my page i'm going to have the values of the person object printed if i want to print out just the key i'm going to use key or if i just want to print out the properties i'm going to be just printing out key here and to print out the properties to the page so i'll tell you something about using the the for in loop i mean you can comfortably use this for objects but when you want to use it for arrays just make sure that the order of the indexes are not important if not just stick to using the for loop or the for off loop for arrays now we have the while loop and the do while loop and what we use this to do is the same thing as the for it's just that the while loop will loop through a block of code as long as the condition is true while the do loop will execute the code once before it looks at the condition and then it continue execution if the condition is met and so let us do use the while loop for this so i'll say let x be equal to this and i want to have the iterator m to be i let i be equal to zero so let's start from zero let length be equal to employees dot length so i'll say while i is less than len i want to do something i want to print it out to the page so i'll say x plus equal employees i and i want to add a break tag between them when you use the while loop if you do not increment or decrement or do something about it it is going to print infinitely and it is going to crash your browser my spelling of length is wrong so i'll save refresh and it is going to be infinite and it's not going to print anything because i just crashed my browser by using this condition like this so what do i want to do i will say i plus plus like this save this so i'll have to reopen this and so when i refresh i have the items printed so you always increment if i if i decide that i want to do something like um i is less than 10 let's forget about the employees i want to print out i and when i increment i'm going to have one um zero to nine printed to the page now for the do while loop it's going to be a little different the do while loop will execute a block of code at least once before it looks at the condition and then when it looks at the condition it is going to now see if the condition is true it will continue but if not it stops and so we write it like this do and then we put what we want it to do here and then we put the condition using the while here something so if i say do i want to print out i say x plus equal i plus break like this and i want to do this as long as i is less than or equal to 10 so let's start i from 1 and i want to print 1 to 10 on the page so i'm going to refresh my page and i don't have it printing i have an infinite loop that has crashed the browser so always remember to increment or decrement so now we are going to be incrementing i plus plus you have to tell it what to do 
when it meets the condition or you have an infinite loop like this. So I'm going to exit the page because I crashed my browser. I will reload and now I have it here. So take note, when you use the while, while and the do while loop, you always need to put your increment or decrement operator or where you want it to stop before you go to your browser or you're going to crash your browser because you have an infinite loop that has no end. So we have looked at all of the different types of loops. Try them out with different types of variables to see if um, which one is most appropriate for the type of variable that you have. Now, take note that arrays are a special type of objects. They are objects also. And so when you use things like a type of operator on array, it is going to return the type of object. So let's see. X, let's say we want to print out type of employees to tell us that employees is an object so when i refresh i'm going to have it as an object but if i want to really see if this is an array what i'll do is to put array dot is array and i want to see if employees is an array it will return a boolean true or false if it is an array it will be true if it is not an array it's going to be false so when i say person it's going to be false because person is an object like this so take note that the type of operator will return objects for arrays because arrays are a kind of object in JavaScript. So in the next lesson, we are going to go back to look at the methods that we use to iterate through an array. And then we are going to look at conditional statements. Thank you and see you in the next lesson.